using the Matilda Day login page as an example, and in the context of a brute force attack, I'm going to take a look at the Burp Suite Comparer. This is the tab used over here in the right that compares different requests. So the first thing we're going to do is make sure that Burp Suite is being used as a proxy by Firefox. So Burp Suite is checked by a proxy selector. And in Burp Suite, the intercept is turned on. So going back to Firefox, we'll put in some username and some password just to generate a request in order for us to be able to capture it. So we've captured the request inside of the proxy tab, intercept, subtab. And here's the user and the password that we passed in. We're going to right click and send these to the intruder so we can start a brute force attack. And then we'll go ahead and turn the intercept off. And the intruder Burp automatically selects all the fields that make good candidates to try different automated injections, but we're targeting the username and password field because we're trying to brute force the login. So we're just going to clear all of them, highlight the user, put the selector symbols back around it, and highlight the password and do the same. Instead of using the sniper attack, which would inject each field one at a time, we're going to use the cluster bomb which not only injects both fields, but it'll also try all combinations of two different word lists. So go to the payloads and we're going to load word list number one is going to be some usernames and word list number two is going to be some sample passwords that think we think are good candidates. And these are of course put together ahead of time, just type in the words and press enter between each word. Let's go ahead and launch the attack. So Burp Suite's trying the first password with all the different usernames and then it'll try the second password with all the different usernames and so on and so forth. There's already a couple of interesting results. There's a status of 200 returned with administrator password, but with the Jeremy password, there's a 302 returned. Also, the lengths are different. The standard request has a length of 23130, and some of these requests have the length of 2312 and 23140. So we want to compare those to figure out why the application differed and what it returned. So we'll compare the Jeremy password with the ed password and see what the differences were. We'll highlight both of them and then say send selection to compare and we're going to compare the responses with the server returned. Go to the compare tab. So we're going to compare this item here with the fourth item. And the reason there are already two items here is because I was testing earlier and was comparing two other ones. So when we hit the compare button, one of the things that's useful is to check the sync views box. That way when we scroll the scroll bar up and down, the two sides move at the same time. So we can already see that the difference is, is on the left, the one with the 302 found, there's a set cookie for username Jeremy and a location back to index.php and a logged in user of Jeremy. So clearly the main difference was is that the login worked. Now on the fourth request, we were already logged in. This request occurred after the one that worked. So it still says logged in user is Jeremy, but apparently the ed username and password combination didn't work because one, there's no set cookies and two, even though we tried to log in as Ed, we're still logged in as Jeremy. So this indicates that the Jeremy username with the password password was successful. And this is a simple example of how to use Burp Compare to compare various requests quickly.